The low-level bridge was constructed in 1972 for the Department of Defence as part of the access road into HMAS Stirling, which is now referred to as Fleet Base West. The bridge comprises a reinforced concrete roadway deck supported by a steel structure on steel piles. The two abutments are reinforced concrete and steel pile sheeting and the bridge superstructure also carries trunk infrastructure services such as power and water that support the island. The two-lane bridge is approximately 305 metres long by 10 metres wide and the clearance under the bridge can be limited depending on the tide. The bridge repair project objectives were to address any potential remediation requirements prior to 2027. The elements of the bridge to be remediated included the reinforced concrete, structural steel and vehicle guardrails to provide a target service life of a further 50 years from 2005. The remediation requirements were presented in the whole of life plan for the bridge as part of the submission. Works were undertaken under a head contract, document and construct, direct to the Department of Defence. The remediation design aspects of the project were undertaken by GHD, who were the novated designers to Duratech. The Capital Facilities and Infrastructure Branch, which sits within the Infrastructure Division of the Estate and Infrastructure Group for Defence, appointed RPS Project Manager as the Contracts Administrator for the project, and Duratech Australia were awarded the project in 2015. One of the most critical issues for the project was that while any repair works were being undertaken, access to the base was to be maintained with a minimum of disruption. As part of the Duratech submission, this was addressed by providing lightweight, adjustable scaffold decks that could be floated in place, which would allow little disruption to vehicle access to the base. Following mobilisation and initial access deck installation, a full safety breakout of the sacrificial concrete underlay deck was carried out. This included removal of potential loose concrete and any sagging or loose reinforcement. The structural steel was then descaled to remove scallop and corrosion buildup and to allow for ultrasonic thickness testing. The UT testing was carried out at 100mm grid centres to determine the loss of steel section. The results were submitted to the design team to establish the extent and location of steel strengthening requirements. The project also required the removal of existing coal tar epoxy coatings from the steelwork on the underside of the bridge. The coatings removal was undertaken by abrasive blasting, requiring a fully encapsulated work area for the safe management of a hazardous material in a sensitive marine environment. This included a negative air pressure filter and HEPA filters to comply with painting contractor certification program specifications. Where structural strengthening was required, steel plates were welded in place in accordance with strict weld procedures. Any steel elements found to be beyond remediation due to severe corrosion were replaced. Cracking due to corrosion was also discovered between the concrete and the horizontal steel support beams along sections of the bridge. These cracks were epoxy injected to enable the shear anchors to continue to be engaged between the concrete and steel support beams and to prevent future corrosion occurring. Following the plate installation for steel strengthening, the completion of the coatings removal took place, which included an initial water wash and then final abrasive blasting of steelwork to SA Class 2.5. A surface tolerant epoxy was then applied in two coats to a final dry film thickness of 1000 microns. The coating application process was subject to a stringent third party testing regime which included surface profile, salt contamination, adhesion tests, DFT and spark testing. The completion of the structural steel protection stage of the project was to address various steel elements located in the tidal zone. With the bridge location being exposed to tides, swell and current from the movement of water in and out of Coburn Sound, it became extremely challenging for the remediation of surfaces above the lowest astronomical tide level. Divers had difficulty in maintaining their position in these conditions and smaller purpose-made access systems were eventually utilised for this work which involved cleaning marine growth from the piles and sheet piles. The bridge support steel H piles then had polystyrene blocks cut to create a cylindrical shape on the pile 
to enable protective tape and circular jackets to be fitted. Following installation and tightening of the jackets, an epoxy chamfered finish was placed at the top of the jackets to shed water. The sheet piling at the north abutment received a surface tolerant epoxy coating system to match other steel elements of the bridge. Concrete elements of the bridge that were repaired included the deck transfer beams, retaining walls and pile caps at the north and south bridge abutments. The deck edges, concrete beams and concrete deck soffit on the east and west sides. The concrete repair technique used for the deck edges was conventional repairs with sacrificial anodes for galvanic protection to the reinforcement and application of a silane protective treatment. Concrete repair techniques to the bridge abutments utilised installing impressed current cathodic protection after the repair of the existing concrete. A new power supply was provided to the southern end of the bridge for the transformer rectifier unit for cathodic protection system operation on both abutments. A touchscreen for the transformer rectifier unit made for easy adjustment of the system and there was sufficient capacity for the future requirements of pile cathodic protection which was planned for after 2027. In addition to the cathodic protection system, the new power supply was also utilised to run vibrating wire gauges that were installed to monitor the movement of the bridge expansion joints. These were installed at five locations along with a remote monitoring system with an inbuilt modem enabling dialing in for live data. During the project, the expansion joint at Bent 20, which had been in a frozen state, began moving and on further investigation resulted in the discovery of pile eccentricity being present at various locations on the bridge. This had been from the original construction and a study was commissioned to assess the effect that this had on current loads and bridge use to meet current standards. After engineering modelling of the bridge was completed, taking into account the eccentricity locations and data from the vibrating wire gauges, a series of options were presented to Defence to alleviate any effect the eccentricity could have. Emergency work was carried out at selected expansion joints to limit bridge movement. Additional strengthening and bracing was then installed at selected bents. This meant changing some of the pile jacket configurations as well as encapsulating the newly designed bracing brackets in epoxy grout to limit the likelihood of movement and corrosion. In addition to the steel and concrete elements, the guardrails along both sides of the bridge were remediated with new protective coatings, replacement of bolt connections and the base plates were inspected and treated where necessary prior to the application of a corrosion protective tape. Traffic disruptions to the base were kept to a minimum during this work with program scheduling occurring outside of peak traffic times and over the Christmas and New Year period. To meet quality and testing requirements, a full project management team was provided for the duration of the project. Defence project completion in relation to the estate data tool and the commissioning handover and takeover was undertaken progressively during the project. The three key objectives for the project were all met to all the stakeholders' satisfaction. These were to extend the useful life of the low-level bridge to at least 2027, with the future intention to extend the service life to 2055. To finish the works by the nominated project completion date with approved extensions of time. And to deliver the project for a total cost within the approved budget for the delivery phase. The project was completed in March 2017.